Hello, uh, excited to be here. Uh, so my name is Itai, uh, I'm from the Technion, uh, and this is a joint work with my advisor whose name is also Itai. Uh, please note how we spell it differently. Uh, yeah, never mind. So, um, as you know, uh, the cryptocurrency systems lie their uh, security on uh, incentivizing participants to act honestly. And in the gap game, we analyze uh, such systems uh, with regards to a wide range of uh, parameters, and we get some disturbing results. Uh, firstly, we get that miners are actually incentivized to stop participating for these periods of times. We call the mi uh, mining gaps, hence the, the title, the, the gap game. Uh, and that's bad because when they're not participating, they're not contrib contributing to the security of the system. And the other result we get is that these miners are actually incentivized to join forces and form coalitions of miners or bigger mining pools, uh, which makes the system centralized, which also hurts the security of the system because now it's more uh, prone to 51% attacks. So I'll start with some background, even though most of it was already covered by all the previous talks. Uh, we'll skip right through it and then get to the details. So uh, in a cryptocurrency system, we have uh, these users that want to create transactions uh, with currency entered to the system. And we have these other type of users called miners that validate these transactions and group them into blocks. Uh, and then append them to the blockchain, which essentially is just a linked list of all previous blocks containing all previous uh, verified transactions. Um, just the ledger of all history of transactions. Uh, to add blocks to the blockchain, uh, we rely on a proof of work uh, scheme, meaning miners have to invest computational work to create a block. Um, and more specifically, uh, they have to combine three facts. To, to, the, the work is a combination of uh, three elements. Uh, the first is a, a pointer or the header of the last block. Uh, the second is the set of transactions that they want to include in their block. And the third is this some mysterious value in Bitcoin, it's called nonce, uh, that they have to provide, which uh, in combination with the previous two, val uh, two elements uh, satisfies some uh, condition. Uh, in Bitcoin, it's the, the hash of this uh, combination has to be lower than some uh, value. Um, and once they do that, they either get a, a, a success, which means the block is valid and they can append it to the blockchain, or they get it's bad and they have to try and find another value. And the thing about this process, it is a memoryless, meaning that all your previous attempts at finding these values actually do not affect your uh, future success uh, probabilities. It doesn't matter if you've been trying for the last five minutes or the last, uh, I don't know, one year, you're still gonna get, uh, you're expected to find that uh, elusive uh, value in a certain period of time. So uh, the thing about proof of work been mentioned plenty of times uh, in the last uh, two days, it's really, really expensive. And actually miners invest in specific hardware uh, just to be able to, to play in this game. And they also have to account for huge uh, amount of uh, electricity expenses. I think uh, yesterday it mentioned like the, like the consumption in Denmark, something like that. So it's a really, really, really high consumption. And it obviously has its cost. So yeah, we'll have to compensate the, these miners in a, in a way. <laughs> Uh, before we get to the, that compensation, I'll mention that uh, in Bitcoin and su such other systems, uh, the block creation rate is, uh, we desire to be at a, at a, fixed, uh, at a fixed rate. Um, this is due to security and economical reasons. And the way to achieve that is by setting the, the difficulty of the, um, of the condition I previously mentioned. If we get that blocks are created too fast, we'll make the, the condition harder. It will be harder to create future blocks. Therefore, we'll, de we'll decrease the, the rate, and vice versa if it's uh, too easy. So um, the thing about this difficulty parameter or difficulty of the condition is that it's, the term, it's derived from the behavior of all miners. All miners contributed blocks to the blockchain, 
and affecting the rate. Um, another thing that we need to remember is we have this uh, longest chain rule, which basically means the, uh, the chain with the, hardest, with the more work is the chain we support. And if we have a conflict, we go for the chain with, with the more work. Um, the more work we have uh, makes it more difficult for an attacker to take over the chain. Uh, this is what uh, we refer to as a 51% attack. Obviously, if there's more work, it's harder to, to achieve 51% of the computational power. So, the incentives for mining. We have expenses. How do we get compensated? Um, two sources. The first is the minting of new currency. Alon was talking about it uh, in his last talk. Um, with each new block, new coins are minted. They are awarded to the miner who managed to, to create the block. Uh, the other is the uh, fees from transactions that the miner decided to include in this block. So, uh, we have this, uh, from a miner's view, we have this uh, set of pending transactions, and now we have to decide which transactions we want to include in our block. Uh, please note, you can't include all pending transactions. Uh, in Bitcoin, it's due to the uh, blocks having a, a limited size. So, and transactions have size, so you can't fit them all in. In Ethereum, it's uh, with, with the same with gas. Uh, and a miner has to choose which transactions he wants to include. And obviously, he wants to maximize his profit, so he'll go for the transactions that offer the highest fees. Uh, in this example, let's say we can only pick three out of these uh, seven, eight transactions. So we'll go for the ones that offer the highest fees. Uh, that being said, let's uh, review this uh, mining scenario that happens uh, every day. Um, assume we uh, block 94 was found in uh, my uh, example uh, blockchain. Uh, and now a miner wants to, to participate and find uh, block 95. So uh, the situation uh, goes like this. Uh, he, the protocol dictates that if he's going to find a block, he's going to get awarded with five new coins. Five coins will be minted and awarded to that miner. Uh, currently, there are no transactions uh, pending or there are transactions that offer no fees. And he can estimate uh, how much electricity is going to cost him for finding the next block. In this case, four coins. Obviously, five is bigger than four. He's, in, he's gonna get some money. So yeah, let's start mining. So he starts mining, and some time passes. He, still, he didn't find the block. Um, but now something nice happens, and a, a transaction is introduced to the system, and now offers uh, one coin as fee. So he's, he wants to maximize his profit. Uh, this is a memoryless process. It doesn't matter how much time he was spending on the previous block. Let's change the set of transactions create this new block uh, composed of uh, five minted coins and one uh, coin from the transactions, and keep on mining. So he keeps on mining, uh, and some time passes, he still doesn't find the block. But now another transaction arrives, again offering one coin as fees. Let's repeat that process and keep on mining, and eventually he finds a block. Yay, he gets uh, seven coins, uh, five, from the, five newly minted, and two from transactions. Uh, his uh, costs were expected to be four coins. He gets uh, three coins. That's a good deal. Um, this concludes the background section, and now let's talk about what we do in the gap game. So uh, the first question we ask ourselves is, what do you get by optimizing the, the set of transactions uh, throughout the mining process? You start in mining, suddenly you see there are more transactions. Is it really beneficial to, to change the set? Do, do, you, want, do you even uh, bother with that? So what we did is uh, set up a, a Bitcoin node uh, in my office, uh, connected it to the network, synced with it, and just uh, recorded what, uh, what are the transactions available uh, throughout uh, the, this uh, period of time. Um, th these are the results. Um, what you see here is the, on, the, on the vertical axis is, the, is uh, how much money would you get from uh, optimize, from selecting the, the set of transactions that uh, yeah, the, the optimal set of transactions. Um, the, the horizontal axis is the time since the previous block. Uh, and these are just uh, arbit arbitrarily selected blocks that uh, I, I choose. Um, so you can see that uh, it grows in a pretty linear fashion. Uh, we actually used the linear regression on that and got a good fit. Uh, and one more important thing to say about this graph is that you can notice that um, at the beginning of time, immediately after a block was found, there are some still uh, pending transactions uh, that offer some fees. Uh, 
that's, well, obviously that's expected because you can't fit all transactions uh, inside a block. The thing about fees is, uh, is that they're becoming dominant. Uh, and that happens for two re main reasons. Well, the first is that um, we have this fee market uh, that uh, forms in the cryptocurrencies. They become more popular. People are willing to pay more fees to get their transactions uh, in blocks. Uh, so they offer more fees. Uh, think about uh, CryptoKitties, for example, uh, or uh, Bitcoin in last December. Uh, and another reason is that um, we, in some currencies, we have uh, limited supply, meaning there, uh, there's a finite amount uh, of currency going to be minted. And uh, obviously, as you, we create new blocks, the, the amount in each block uh, diminishes, uh, meaning uh, in, in future blocks, the fees should uh, be a more substantial part of the reward. So let's revisit our morning scenario, but when the fees are more dominant. So the same scenario as before, just having one Bitcoin available uh, as, a, as a minting reward. Uh, and at this point of time, a, a rational miner would look at the situation and say, all right, I'm gonna spend about four coins on mining, and I'm gonna get only one coin from that. So that's not a rational decision, right? I, a rational dec decision would be to not mining. So to not mine. So that's what the miner would do. It would just be idle and wait. And then some time passes and some transactions uh, are introduced to the system and these transactions offer three coins as, uh, as fees because uh, fees are dominant now. Uh, and still in this situ situation, the miner is expected uh, to lose four coins. He can earn four coins. He doesn't want to work for free, so he's still idle, still waits. Some time passes, more transactions are introduced, uh, and now finally he is uh, about to actually earn for mining, so he starts mining and finds the block. Um, so this is like a situation that the miner has to account for, right? Not having enough incentive to mine. Um, sorry. Uh, and obviously a rational miner should optimize when he's mining and when he's not mining. Uh, this idea is called the uh, mining gaps, so periods of time when you're not mining. And it was uh, introduced in a, in a work two years ago by Carlsten et al. Um, their work focused mainly on uh, Bitcoin uh, mining strategies, and they also postulated about this uh, mining gap. Uh, th they use this model that applies to Bitcoin in 100 years from now when there is no minting at all, uh, which is not the case at the moment. Um, and they also had this assumption of uh, unbounded blocks, uh, meaning all pending transactions can be fit into a block, uh, which is not uh, currently part of the spec of uh, Bitcoin. Um, and they postulated about uh, having mining gaps. Um, and obviously now we don't have mining gaps. So the question is, uh, when do these uh, gaps start? Uh, and what are their implications? And a little spoiler alert, they're much, much closer than we, than we hope for. So what we do in the gap game is basically model cryptocurrencies uh, and analyze the, the incentives and the expenses of miners. And we do that by defining a game. So we, this is like a game theory thing, uh, where the players are the miners, the strategies are when to mine or when, when uh, to start and stop mining, and the utility function is the expected profit. Uh, we use uh, mathematical analysis and simulations and talk about the implications of our results. So the expected profit of a miner uh, is composed of all these elements uh, I described uh, since the beginning of, our, of the talk. Uh, the, the expenses about uh, mining hardware and electricity, the, the incentives is, uh, is about to get, his, his choice of strategy, when to mine, when to not, and the behavior of other players because that affects the difficulty which in, in turn affects his chances of, of finding blocks. So the way to derive this expected profit uh, was basically comp composition of three steps. Uh, the, first, the first was to find the block uh, creation uh, probability distribution function. Um, that part was a bit tricky. It was a composition of uh, random variables, of shifted, uh, exponentially distributed other random variables. Uh, the full details are in the paper. I'm not going to talk about that. Um, the second part was to assume when we found the block and then derive the conditionally expected profit of that miner. Um, this is like more straightforward thing. 
And the third, uh, the third step was to combine the, the, the two first steps using the, the law of total expectation, sometimes called the smoothing theorem, to get the expected profit of a miner. Uh, so once we have this, uh, the, the utility function, we, we know miners are rational and they want to optimize, they want to increase their utility. So we get uh, the thing we call the gap game, where we, all, where we have all these miners and they all wish to, to optimize their profit by changing the, their strategies. Um, so what we did is uh, conducted the following experiment. We set up uh, the system parameters, how much uh, incentives are, are introduced, what are the costs. And then we created the, this set of random miners uh, with the sizes uh, that we wanted. And at uh, each turn, we, and, and in turns, we, we, let, uh, we, we pick a miner in random and let him optimize and change his strategy. And we repeat this process until uh, we get to, a, to an equilibrium. Um, and, and now I'm going to describe the, the results of the, the equilibrium. So um, th this is a graph has a lot of data, so I'll walk, <laughs> walk, you, through, walk you through it uh, slowly. Um, th this uh, blue dot is one experiment uh, in which we had uh, eight players, uh, eight miners in a sense. Um, and we are, I also have to define this, uh, this notation called the EBRR, which is the, basically the ratio between the rewards you get at the start of mining from win minting and uh, Previously unminted, uh, previously not included transaction fees, uh, over the the expected reward you're going to get throughout uh, the, the 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 time uh, in which you'll expect to find the block. Uh, what you need to know is <laughs> basically the, the lower the the EBRR, the more dominant the fees are. That's the that's the rule of thumb about the EBRR. Um, and we present on the, on the vertical axis the, the gap size. So in this example, it's about uh, 0 0.3, which means for 30% of, uh, of the, the expected block time, miners do not mine in this situation. In Bitcoin, three minute, miners wait three minutes since the, the finding of previous block until they start mining the next block. Um, we obviously repeat this experiment for, uh, for diff different number of miners. Uh, and get this graph. Uh, and you can see that the, the less miners we have in the system, the bigger the gap is, which is a bit disturbing, but I'll get back to that in, in a second. Um, and obviously, we repeat the, the, this experiment for different uh, parameters, uh, and we get the, this graph. And uh, you can see that uh, the lower the, the EBRR, the more dominant the fees, uh, we get gaps that are bigger. So in this extreme uh, point of uh, two miners and zero EBRR, we get that the gap is over 80%. That's like, I'm gonna <laughs> wait more than eight minutes and then gonna start mining, uh, which obviously is really, really bad because we lose 80% of the work invested in the system. And I'll remind you that we want more work because then we're more resilient to 51% attacks. So uh, in a sense, we want to be at the, at the bottom uh, right-hand side and uh, the system pulls us uh, towards the upper uh, left hand side. Uh, another graph that I'm going to show is uh, about the, the increase in utility uh, from this optimization. So it has a very, very similar shape to the previous one, but uh, notice that the vertical axis is how much you gain from doing this optimization, how much you profit from actually participating in the gap game. Uh, and you can see that, well, obviously you profit from that. And uh, that uh, the less players are in the system and the, the more dominant the fees, I mean, the, the lower EBRR, um, you, you, get, you get more by optimizing. So that means um, the, the darker doesn't, I'll take that back. Uh, please note that, uh, let, let's assume we're eight players in the system and with some uh, value of EBRR. Uh, and let's like look uh, to the left side and see what happens if we were only four players. And we see that uh, in this situation, we actually would have increased our profit by uh, slightly more. And what would a rational group of miners do in this situation? They would join forces, right? They would pair up and create these four uh, double-sized miners. And by that, we'll increase their profit. And now let's keep on looking left and we see that if we were only two miners, we would increase our profit even more. So 
what would the, these four um, mining pools would do? They would join forces and create two mining pools, um, double in size, and will increase their profit. Um, which is, again, bad. That means the system becomes centralized, and we don't want that. Um, we also included a, a Bitcoin test case uh, in this uh, work. Um, we just, it, it's just a speculation. Please don't uh, you know, <laughs> come back in a year and say you were wrong. Uh, <laughs> we, we assume the, 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 all the parameters stay uh, as they are today. Uh, but uh, just uh, taking into account the, the halving of the reward, the, half, the halving of the minting world, which occurs every four years, uh, and we get that in about 10 years in Bitcoin, we will have an optimization of 20% uh, gap. 20% of the work will be lost, in a sense. So, to conclude, um, in the gap game, we have a model and an analysis of rational, of rational miners' behavior, uh, taking into account incentives and expenses, uh, we talk about mining gaps uh, and their, uh, the way they, be, they make the system less resilient uh, to 51% attacks and make it more centralized. Uh, and please uh, w take something from uh, this talk when you uh, analyze uh, current systems or f plan future systems, please consider this as well. Uh, I'll just mention that uh, this work got accepted to CCS and I'll be presenting it there next week. Thank you very much.